October of 2023, we're going to have two eclipses. One on October 14th, that's a solar eclipse. And then one on October 28th, which is the lunar eclipse. Today I'm going to talk about the effects of this solar eclipse in your chart and also in the world at large. Okay. Now, uh, for those of you who haven't seen any of my eclipse videos, eclipses run in cycles. Every 18 years and 10 days, we have an eclipse that's of the same cycle. And these cycles are about 1,600 years long. So there's a similar theme in every one of these eclipses. For 1,600 years, every 18 years and 10 days, there's an eclipse that has the same theme. It has the same urge to move life on Earth in a certain way. Okay? And this is how long-term changes happen, where every time the eclipse comes, there's a little shift in direction, a little shift and a little shift. And throughout time, this creates like a huge shift across the face of the Earth and in our lives. Um, because the eclipse cycles are about are 18 years and five, 10 days apart, in our life, we're going to have, on average, four or five eclipse cycles, you know, four or five um, cycles coming through our life. Oh, that's not the right way to say it. The right way to say it is, every, every type of eclipse we'll have about four or five times in our life. Okay, it doesn't just happen once. So the eclipse that's happening now in October 2023 also happened in October um, of 20, end of October of 20, 2005, 18 years ago. And there's a common theme between that eclipse and this eclipse. Things that happened then, what you changes you might have made could be adjusted and shifted in the current eclipse. Okay, um, how we know what the theme of the eclipse is is by looking at the first eclipse in the cycle. Okay, the chart over here is of the first eclipse in this cycle, which was June 29th, 1248, at 1349:33 Washington D.C. time. Now that's the Gregorian calendar date. Okay, so if you want to enter this, you have to enter as a Gregorian calendar date, not a Julian calendar date. Okay, so this eclipse is going to let us know what this cycle is about, and every eclipse in this cycle is going to have that theme adjusted by the uniqueness of that eclipse itself. Okay, which is this chart over here, the one that's happening on October 14th, 2023, at 1359:31 DC. Okay, now. This eclipse is falling at 21 degrees. It's a solar eclipse where the sun and moon are conjunct at 21 degrees of tropical Libra. Okay, so if you're using a different zodiac, do it using a sidereal Ionumsha, you'll need to correct that and calculate that for your sidereal chart. Okay, so um, if you have a planet um, close to 21 Libra or a house cusp or any pl important planetary body, the eclipse is going to impact you strongly. Mercury's conjunct the eclipse point. It's at 17 degrees. It's just four ways from the eclipse. If Mercury's your ascendant lord, it's going to affect you strongly, this eclipse. Um, whatever house Mercury rules in your chart, the eclipse is going to have some effect and relevance to that house. Everyone is going to be impacted on a mercurial level during this eclipse. Now, how big a deal that's going to be is going to be depend of how important Mercury is in your chart and more importantly where is the eclipse falling in your chart if it's in an angle cusp like the first fourth seventh or tenth cusp it's going to be important if it's on any planets it's going to be important if it's on any other cusp it'll be important but not as important as the angular cusp so everyone won't be affected by this eclipse you might have been affected by the 2005 eclipse, which would have been 10 degrees different in a 10 place different by 10 degrees, but um, you might not be affected by this one. So look at your chart and see if these effects are really going to impact you. Okay. So to get the eclipse theme, we need to look at the chart of the original eclipse of this cycle that was about 800 years ago. Now in this chart, we have the sun and moon at um, eight degrees of cancer. So that's important because we have a lot of planets right at eight degrees. We have Mars at eight degrees, Saturn at eight degrees, and Pluto at five degrees. So in that eclipse cycle, these planets, Mars, Saturn, Pluto, are having the strongest impact and influence on the, what's gonna, what this eclipse means. Okay. Well, first of all, 
it's an eclipse that fell. Um, I want to get to that, but those are going to be the important themes. I don't want to get too involved. I want to keep it simple. Okay, we got Mars and Saturn on angles from each other, both at eight degrees. Mars, Saturn, and angles together is push and shove. Nothing works. It's about, it's about being stuck. Okay? Saturn makes Mars stuck. Mars wants Saturn to get his butt moving, but Saturn's like, that's not my job. So you get stuck. You get this bicycle shirt I'm wearing. See the square wheels? Guy's not going to get very far. That's the picture of this eclipse. Things are just not moving forward. Okay? Now, along with that, we get Pluto over here saying, I'm here to bust things up. Saturn, Mars is yeah, we're stuck. There's all this energy, but it's stuck. It won't move. Well, that's called a firecracker when you add Pluto to it. Because then all of a sudden, Pluto comes along and lights it up or breaks the firecracker and boom, boom, all of a sudden everything changes. Okay? So that's what's happening with this Saturn Mars. This is an eclipse. Uh, every one of the eclipses in this cycle are going to have this theme of something being stuck and a bomb showing up to unstick it. Okay, Pluto's the bomb. Now, the reason these planets are going to really affect this eclipse is because they're at the same degrees as the eclipse. So Saturn and Pluto are trining the Sun-Moon eclipse point. So they're, all this energy is going to get fed right into the eclipse. Okay, if Sun and Moon were like at 22 degrees, it really wouldn't be such a big thing. But they're right at 8 degrees. So all this energy that's stuck, that wants to be freed up by Pluto, is coming through this eclipse. So if this eclipse, if any cycle hits you, it's about getting unstuck from something. So there's been something that just hasn't been moving forward. And maybe you've been plotting with it, working it, pushing against that wall forever, and it's just nothing's changing. Then this is the eclipse that can all of a sudden make things change, relevant to what it hits. So look at the thing it's hitting and go, how have I been stuck with this thing? How has this thing not been moving forward? You know? How do I need this to be different for my life to be okay? And this eclipse is about saying, boom, I'm going to unstick it. Now, the trick to the whole eclipse is the Pluto. And the Pluto's with Saturn. So the unstuckness comes from overcoming the fear. Saturn is the fear, it's the limitations. We have a feeling within us that if we do certain things, we're going to be in trouble. You know, that our survival's at stake. We'd rather die than do certain things, you know? Everyone has things we'd rather die than do, okay? Or things we'd rather die than have happen to us, okay? Those are the Saturn types of things where we've developed such a strong programming about those things that we're just, no way, I'm not going there. Was, I, that's not me, I won't do that. But it might actually be you. It might actually be something you need to do. And so when Pluto and Saturn are in contact, Pluto's like, sorry dude, you don't get to hold on to those fears anymore. It's, it's time to live those, go through them, step through them, get over it. And so it's a time of the fears that are causing you to be stuck, to become unstuck. Now this sounds really scary, doesn't it? Okay? The good news is, because the Saturn and Pluto are in a nice trine relationship to the sun and moon to the eclipse, it's not going to be that scary. It's going to generally be a nice resolution where things just kind of work out. Okay, So in general, this eclipse is one that's going to help people get unstuck without a lot of fear. Okay, Now, you can think of a bomb. You know, you're walking along and boom, your whole life blows up. Well, it could be that kind of bomb can get you unstuck, but that's not what this eclipse is about. This eclipse is more like a bullet. A bullet is a little bomb that's very precisely fired to do one little thing. Nothing scary about it. It's controlled and it's boom, job done. Okay? And that's what this is about because it's in the trine. So this is about some part of you releasing the fear, doing what you have to do because of circumstances. You don't have any choice anymore. But then having the clarity and the focus to go into it smoothly, go into it with focus, go, okay, this is what I have to do. And that'll still be scary. You're still going to confront the fear. Okay? That's how this eclipse is going to affect 90% of the people. Now, there's going to be some people who, who are, or have fears that they've really, really buried. 
you know? We have fears that we're aware of that are haunting us. Oh, I want to do that, but... Oh, if I do that, oh, I can't do that. You know, it's a conscious, oh, no, I can't do that. Then we also have fears that we don't even entertain. We're not even aware of. These are much deeper fears. If your fear, if if the planet that's, or point in your chart is, that's getting triggered by this eclipse is that deep of a fear, that's not part of your conscious awareness, then you can't aim at it with that bullet, you know? Then you might find yourself having this huge crisis that is like, oh my gosh, shows you the fear, but also in that crisis helps you resolve it. This is considered a good eclipse, okay? Now, good or bad eclipse cycles, they always are a little scary because there's always the unknown factor. In an eclipse, you know, it's a solar eclipse. The sun's going to be dark. There's going to be no light for a while, which means, uh uh-oh, what do I do? It's dark. I I can't see in front of me. What do I do? Where do I go? I don't know. A solar eclipse gives that kind of feeling. And that can be scary. But this is actually a nice, gentle eclipse to help you get unstuck from things that have possibly been dead weights in your life, very heavy, limiting factors that need to come unstuck. This eclipse, its purpose is to free us from those types of things. And that makes it a great eclipse, okay? Um, There are some eclipses that come along to just tear through our lives and just say, nope, that's not going to work, you know? and just remove something from our lives. This is not one of those eclipses. This is about, this. you've been stuck, you've been wanting this gone, you've been wanting this to be over. You know, you want to quit this job for 10 years, and finally you get to quit the damn job and move on with your life. It's very much an eclipse of moving forward with your life, okay? That's the theme of this eclipse. Now that theme is gonna be more or less intense and that's going to hold true for every one of these eclipses every 18 years and 5 days, for another 800 years and 800 years back, okay? The present chart is going to show us more about specifically what this eclipse is doing. And again, this eclipse is at 21 degrees of Libra, tropical Libra. The only planet that's really close to the Greek, really causing an aspect to this, is Pluto, is over here in a square at 27 degrees, so it's six degrees apart, so it's a pretty good solid square. And Mercury is just four degrees from the eclipse point, so the key planet is Mercury. Now when Mercury is commonly eclipsed, it's very commonly eclipsed, okay? And um, because it's Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, it's always traveling really close to the sun. So it's like, you know, more than one third of the eclipses have Mercury in the same sign. Um, Four degrees away, that's not as common. So this is a heavy Mercury eclipse. So what that means is Mercury is getting eclipsed. So Mercury is going to be out of the picture for a while. When that moon comes in front of the sun and dims the light of the sun, it's also dimming the light of Mercury. So we're going to be sailing without Mercury for a while, okay? Now what does that mean exactly when Mercury is being eclipsed? Well, Mercury is the planet we use to try things. It's like, yeah, I'm going to try that, see if it works. If not, no big deal, I'll try something else. That's all Mercury is. That's his job. It's to simply try things impartially, see if it works, see if this is the one, if this is the right way. And this Mercury is going to be eclipsed, which means there's going to be things that you're just not going to be able to try. You know, you're going to say, oh, I just, but can I just try to do this? You know, so maybe you'll lose your job and you're like, but can I just try one more time? The boss says no. You know, or in your relationship and say it's in a relationship planet and you're in a relationship and maybe some things haven't been working and you're feeling stuck and you're like, okay, I want to try one more time. Nope. You don't get to try during this eclipse. You tried. You don't get to try more. Okay. And that can be a little frustrating sometimes, because as humans, we always want to try, right? You were a very mercurial race, you know? We want to try things. You know, we want to find another way. We want to learn a little more information and apply ourselves a little more intelligently. That's Mercury. You don't get to during this eclipse. Um, You might try trying, but it's not going to work. You know, there is no trying our way out of this eclipse, okay? Um, Now, that's not a bad thing, because again, Sometimes we can keep trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and and it's never working, but then we can keep thinking of another way to try. And so basically we can get stuck because we keep trying sometimes. So this eclipse is saying, no, 
You don't get to stay stuck in this situation by trying and 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 trying. Okay? You don't get that you can't use that as an excuse to be stuck anymore. You have to look at your fears and get over your fears now. And then your life will start working. Because the keep when we keep trying, there's a point we keep trying because we don't want to acknowledge something that's scary to us. And so we can decide not to acknowledge that and instead make an A plus effort to get nowhere. Okay? No, this eclipse isn't allowing for that. Okay? So you're not going to be able to try things. Your normal desire to try something, make something work better, it's just not going to operate. And lots of people will not have the option. It's like, no, you just don't get to try this time. You, you try it a hundred times and it's just not an option during this eclipse. Okay? That'll be really frustrating for triers. Some people love trying. If you're one of those people, this eclipse is going to be more disconcerting to yourself. And it's going to feel like a big crisis. Because you want to try and life says you don't get to and that could be a crisis. Okay? Then the other thing that's going on, we have a repeat of a Pluto. See, here we had Pluto trining the Sun within 3 degrees. In this eclipse, we have Pluto squaring the Sun and Moon within 4 degrees. It's a very tight aspect again. Whenever we see a repeat, same, same, we know that's going to be a major theme going on during this eclipse. So it's a hugely Plutonian eclipse, which means, yeah, this Pluto, this eclipse will change any point this eclipse lands on. It's going to get changed a lot. It's not going to be the same after this eclipse. Whatever house it's falling in, especially if it's close to a house cusp, what planets it's landing on, it's going to change as a result of this eclipse. And how is it going to change? It's going to be less stuck than it was before. It's going to be freer. Okay, it's going to have the ability to move forward more now. But, because it's a square eclipse, it's scary. Scares, squares are scary. Okay? Our psychology doesn't like them as much. It simply feels more threatening to us. We don't feel ready for squares. See, with the trine, we're kind of like ready for it. We're all lined up for it. We go, I got this. But with the square, it's like, uh -uh, you're just not ready for it. It's not that it's worse or harder, but if you're not ready for it, it's a lot more, it's, it's a lot more intense. So this eclipse, amongst these cycles of eclipses, is going to be a bit more of an intense shift to get unstuck than this eclipse generally is. Okay, because we have a strong Pluto aspect to it. Okay, now, we don't have the Mars aspect going on. You know, there's nothing huge going on with Pluto and Mars this time, um, which we had in the original one and the Pluto-Saturn. They're not doing major things. The degrees are too far apart. Okay? Saturn's at, you know, not even one degrees. And then, um, oh, actually, in a way it is. Mars is at one degree. So Mars is actually just ten degrees away from the eclipse here across the border of that sign. So, Mars is actually more involved than I thought, than I remembered, okay? So, yeah, it's, this is going to be a bit of a more intense period of shift and change than this eclipse cycle usually is. But again, it's for the purpose of getting unstuck from that Saturn-Mars stuckness that was in this eclipse. But it's just going to take more of a push to get us unstuck if this is hitting us, okay? So, find out what it's hitting and realize it's time to get unstuck with this thing. It's going to be intense. I'm not going to have a lot of options to try. You're just going to have to move forward with the force of what's pushing you out of that unstuck place. That's what you're going to have to do. Okay? Now, in a world event um, relationship, this eclipse, the Bhava Lagna, which is the world ascendant at any given time, is in this eclipse sign. Okay? So that means there's energy to get a lot of things in the world unstuck right now. Okay, we have a lot of problems in the world. You know, it's like they've only piled up, it seems, right? The world is definitely riding on square wheels. And like this guy here, if this eclipse hits him, all of a sudden he's going to look down at his bike wheels and get this aha moment and realize he needs to put round wheels on if he wants to get somewhere on his bike, right? Well, that's the feeling of this eclipse. And in the respect to world events, with the Bhava Lagna 
um, with the eclipse falling on the Bhava Lagna, that means the world at large is going to find itself getting unstuck. There are things where the world's been stuck that are going to loosen up. Okay? Um, now, what a lot of these things are going to be is that one of the problems we have in the world is people are emotionally attached to things out of fear. And to feel safe, they develop an emotional attachment to certain things. Okay? And you can think, so think about the world's problems. At whatever problem you're interested in the world, think about the emotional attachment to that thing. Like one of the things we have is environment. Well, there's a lot of people emotionally attached to driving a big SUV car. They don't feel safe in a little car. They just don't. They have this emotional attachment to feel safe in a big 20 mile per gallon car instead of a 40 mile per gallon two door. Okay? There's an emotional attachment there. Okay? Um, people have an emotional attachment to being stranded. So they don't want to get a battery operated car, maybe not get, you get juiced up on a, on a trip somewhere. You know, there's an emotional attachment. I don't want to feel stranded. In our work, we have an emotional attachment to I need this job to feel safe. Okay? Um, people, cultures have emotional attachments to their culture and to their religions, um, to the race they are, to the, to the country they belong to. You know, we develop these emotional attachments to feel safe. Okay? And this eclipse on this particular cycle is about breaking people free from those type of emotional attachments. Okay? The result of that will be that the countries hit by this you'll see them shifting. And what I mean by shifting is their emotional attachments to a certain way of being, a certain life, a certain whatever, is going to be less significant to them. Okay? However, that could happen because of crisis is breaking out in this country. So a crisis breaks out and people are like, oh my gosh, you know, the, 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 the emotional energy behind this religion is too much. It's not healthy. You know, it's like, wow, this is this zealousness. You know, no, this isn't healthy. You know, a crisis might show that, wow, we need to let go of some emotional attachments, um, different cultures, races, whatever, throughout the world. And because it's on the bhavalagna of the world, it's going to affect every country to some degree. But it's going to affect some countries a lot more. It really just depends on what... Um, where it's at. Now in the United States, which is what I'm going to talk about, Pluto happens to be in the first house too. So all this eclipse energy with the Pluto is right on the first house of the United States too. So the United States is going to have a lot of issues about, um, they're going to have a lot of issues about attachments to their, things that they're emotionally attached to. For instance, one of the things that's going to be threatened during this time is um, Americans' emotional attachment to democracy. There's an emotional attachment to democracy. Okay? Same way, there is an emotional attachment to being, living in a kingdom back in the day. You know, it's like, there's an emotional attachment, I'm secure because I live in a kingdom with a king. Now, there's this American attachment of, we're safe because we live in a democratic nation, you know? It's like, those are just emotional attachments. We're safe when we're safe and we're not safe when we're not safe. You know, we're safe when things work and we're not safe when things don't work. But we develop an emotional attachment. I'm safe because I'm in a democracy. Well, that idea is going to get threatened. Somehow, this eclipse is going to push those buttons of how safe really is a democracy? Are we stuck in a democracy? Or are we moving forward in a democracy? And what we're going to find is, during this eclipse, is we're stuck in a democracy at this point. Okay? And I have no political idea. I don't even know what's going on. I never read the news. I don't care about politics. I'm just saying what the, I see in the chart. Okay? That the things the nations are emotionally attached to, um, and the United States, of course, there's other reasons I'm using the word democracy, and that is because Pluto's in the sign of Saturn. Saturn is the Democrat. Okay? That's why I'm using that specifically. The United States rising sign is a uh, Saturn sign with Pluto in there saying, yeah, democracy is not going to prove itself really great today. We're going to see the limitations of the democracy practiced in the United States. Okay? Um, that's one thing. There's also going to be um, the ninth house cusp 
of the United States falls in this house too. Okay? So that means a lot of attachments, emotional attachments to the um, belief systems that Americans tend to fall, follow will be threatened. And you know, it's time to get unstuck from belief systems, religious systems. So we're going to see this eclipse is going to cause less people to follow fundamentalistic Christian religions in the United States. A lot of people are going to drop out of that fundamentalistic church. Less people are going to sign up to go to a fundamentalistic church in the United States after this, as a result of this eclipse. Say, no, I don't need to have that emotional attachment. I'm just stuck there. I'm not moving forward with that. I want to move forward. Bad news, Jehovah's Witnesses, but you know, you're going to lose some people this year. Okay? Um, so a lot of it's going to revolve around, again, emotional attached, things we're emotionally attached to. For the United States, I see a lot of that being religious and the democracy. In different countries, it'll be different. Cast the chart for the eclipse for the capital of that country, of the country that you're concerned about, and see what are the buttons that are getting pushed. Okay? Um, we've also got Mercury involved here. Okay? So, um, a lot of the concerns that are kind of come up in the United States during this period are the, you know, the emotional attachments we have about raising children. Countries, every country has its idea, this is how we raise kids. And we're emotionally attached to this. It's like, wait a minute, this idea is not really working. The way we're raising kids, what's the limitations there? How, how are, how's that stuck? It's also going to have to impact with children. Okay. It's also going to um, affect the real estate in the United States. Okay. Um, the real estate market is stuck right now. You know, it's reached a really high price point. Um, the loans have gotten very, very high. Um, houses, the house prices have not come down in proportion to the increase in the, you know, the interest rates. Usually when interest rates go up, home prices go down a lot. Interest rates have gone up a lot. Home prices haven't gone down that much. So if you want to buy a house now, you're paying way more per month than you were you know, two years ago when interest rates were lower and house prices are actually a little higher. Okay? So the housing market is one of these stuck things. People have an emotional attachment about the housing market in America. If you go to Europe, people have a completely different attitude about their housing. You know, my mom grew up in an apartment with 10 siblings, a two-bedroom apartment with 10 siblings. They, all of them lived there. Their parents died in that house. One kid never left. And finally, at the age of 70, um, left that apartment and bought her own. Bought her own apartment after renting and living in the same house with her family or as living there herself for 70 years. That's a very different emotional belief system about your real estate and where you live, about your home, than Americans have. Americans, we have this idea, you have to own a home. There's something wrong with you if you don't own a home. Europeans, they're like, you don't need to own a home, you just need not get wet when it's cold. You know, they're a lot more sensible about it. Americans cause themselves all kinds of trouble sometimes to own a home. And um, there's a huge, again, I'm focusing on the emotional attachment to it. That's what has to get broken to the reality. The real estate, the emotional things that are making the real estate market stuck in America, this belief that Americans have about real estate and the need to own a home to be somebody. A lot of Americans feel like, gosh, I don't even own a home. There's something wrong with me. It's like... You know, they, they believe that, you know. Europeans don't think that same way, you know. Um, you know, Europeans more, from what I've seen, it's like when they get the money to get a home, it's like, yeah, I get to get a home. But they don't feel like there's something wrong with them if they live in an apartment their whole lives. No big deal, you know. But in America, people go, oh, I still live in an apartment. I'm 40 years old and I don't even own my house. It's like, so what, you know. And again, um, in America, so our emotional attachment and the housing market. Um, so this eclipse will get the housing market um, a jam. Now, don't get too excited though. Okay, A lot of people are just waiting for the housing market to go down. And I think the lowest part of the housing market is probably going to be around November. Okay? I think after the, you know, the Ditya Lunar New Year, which is in February of 2024, real estate is going to go, start going up again. Sadly, I know, we've only been going down two years at a very, very, very slow pace, which I did predict. But it's gone down only a little, little bit. The reason is because of inflation. Inflation is so damn high that it costs 
a th- hundred, what is it? It's cost $400 to build the most cheap house per square foot now. So to build a, f- a thousand square foot cheap house, nothing fancy, the contractors are charging you $400,000 now. That's insane. Because for $400,000, even in a nice town where I live, you can still get a 1,500 to 2,000 square foot house for that without all the stress of building it, you know? So, as a result, high house price with inflation, materials are three times as expensive as they were a few years ago. The housing can only, the house prices can only go down so far. Instead, what's going to be happening next year with our new Lunar New Year chart is that the real estate prices, or sorry, inflation is going to continue to go up next year. And it's going to go up to the point that real, it's going to take real estate up with it too. People won't be able to buy it, you know. But see, people, when that inflation hits, they're going to go, gosh, I need to buy something real. You know, they're watching their money be worth less every month in the bank. They want to buy something real. The only real thing is real estate. And that's going to help keep the market, you know, pump the housing prices up. People are getting, more people with money in the bank are going to run out and buy things next year. And that's going to screw up your dream plans of waiting for this bubble to burst, unfortunately. The money won't be worth as much. So relatively to the value of the money, the houses will be cheaper next year. But the dollar amount will be higher. Okay? And the question is, is your income going to go up proportionally? No. Hell no. That's just not how it works, right? So I think this eclipse that's happening right now will, re- will help out the real estate prices for a short while. And this is the last decline year before we start going up again next year. And honestly... It's not as low as we want it to go. Everyone wants it to go lower. But honestly, I don't think it's really going to go lower, you know, unfortunately. I mean, I wish it does. I was hanging on with some money, hoping to go buy some extra places. I'm like, you know, don't know. It's like, I think I'll just wait for the next down, you know, but, um, and just skip this down. I did really good in the down that we had 12 years ago. Really, really good. So... So that's some things I see with the United States. Okay, what else is going on here? Okay, um, I didn't spend too much time looking at the the U.S. chart actually about what was going on with this eclipse. But those are like the major things. Let me look at something else here. Okay, um, foreign relations. Okay, are going to be part of it too because the seventh lord is part of the eclipse right because from here the moon is the seventh lord it's up here with the eclipse right so the seventh lord is part of the eclipse pattern so we're dealing with foreign relations that have been stuck time to get some foreign relationships unstuck so this eclipse should help the united states unstick some of their foreign relationships things that have been not moving forward being stuck eclipse should make some changes with that now again, because of the Pluto scoring the eclipse, these changes are not going to be as gentle as the promise of the original eclipse. Okay? So some crises will probably be part of all these things I'm talking about. All right? Some crises will start helping in these shifts. But overall, the theme is good. Things need to get unstuck. People's emotional attachments to democracy, their emotional attachments to their real estate, their emotional attachments to their belief systems, the things, uh, those attachments that are making them feel stuck right now need to become unstuck, okay? Um, And that's what this eclipse is going to do. Now, for other countries, it'll still be that basic theme of the emotional attachments to, the the culture has an emotional attachment to something. And that will depend on the chart in question about what emotional detachments they'll have to let go of, okay? All right. I hope that helps everyone prepare for this eclipse. Um, all I can say is don't be scared of this one. You know, there's some where I tell you be scared of shit. You know, I had an eclipse once where I was like checking my longevity. I was like, oh my gosh. I don't know if me and my wife are going to live. Checked my longevity, checked her longevity. All right, no one's going to die. Well, we almost died. You know, we broke 10 bones between the both of us because of that eclipse. That was not a fun eclipse. Um, but this is a good eclipse. Who doesn't want to get unstuck? We, we all want it to be unstuck, right? So if you want to be unstuck, look at what's getting hit and go, okay, I'm going to get unstuck from that and appreciate that and be willing to go through whatever crisis it's going to take to 
to loosen up that cement that you've been stuck on. Okay? All right, thanks for listening. And I will get to the lunar eclipse, which has a slightly different theme, um, in a few days. All right, bye-bye.